Hey everybody, I'm Todd and I hope you're having a great week. Whether you have a music production studio like mine or you do videos or presentations, today I'm going to take a look at a really good upgrade from O-Ray that might just change your workflow. It's their USB-C to HDMI 2 interface. Now the USB-C to HDMI 2 box is a really simple item to use. On one side you have USB connections, there's USB-A as well as USB-C and I like that the adapter is captive. You're not going to lose that. On the other side, we have two HDMI ports. There's one that'll handle up to 4K30, and the other is 1080p60. In my workflow, I'm using both at 1080p60 just because it works out better for me. And so, of course, the idea is you can add an additional two monitors to your Windows desktop if you don't have space on your graphics card, say a desktop PC, or if you're using a laptop where you maybe just don't have those outputs available. And so whether you're doing music production, video production, or presentations, more screen real estate is always going to be handy. Now I switched over to the Windows display panel here so you can see how I have the monitors laid out. Now monitors 1, 2, and 3 are from the graphics card in my system. 4 and 5 are from the new O-Ray adapter. If we go to number 5, we'll see here that's got my HP monitor here. That's the monitor. I'll just switch over to camera here. That's the one just off to the side to me here next to the patch bay. This is a digital analog patch bay, 64 by 64 channels. Another video on that coming, but uh, that's where I have that monitor so I can control everything with that. This monitor again is uh, on the ORE adapter. If I go into the advanced settings, you'll see that SMI USB display. That is the ORE running at 60 hertz. Now, if I go over to monitor number four, monitor four actually is on the wall behind me. That's the big one there, the TV back there. Right now I have the OBS various feeds showing on that. So if I want to see what's going on with all the different camera angles, I can do that. But uh, in here, you'll see that that is also running at 1080p, but I can run that one at 4K if I want. This adapter allows us to run one monitor at 4K. I choose 1080p, it just fits my workflow a little better. And the other reason being is that for uh, video reasons in the studio, if I'm on 1080p, I can run that at 60 hertz, but as soon as I switch down to 4K, it's gonna give me 30 hertz. So that'll cause some uh, potential flicker in that with the, uh, with the camera. So. Uh, if you don't have a camera running, it doesn't matter, but that's just something to be aware of. Now, of course, these additional monitors, four and five, can be treated just like any monitors on the system. We can mirror to them, we can extend them. If I wanted, you know, to have a large monitor above my two main DAW screens, I could set it up that way and uh, and, and run that. So if I had anybody else in the, in the space with me and they wanted to see a kind of a bigger view of what's going on, we could do that too. So a lot of, a lot of options, really flexible in terms of what we can do. So again, if I just uh, switch over to the camera behind me, move OBS here down out of the way, what you'll see is that I have, again, the sort of main screen here from Studio One sitting off on the left side, and I have the console from Studio One on the right side. Now, I've got the fader port right below that, so if I'm mixing, I can make adjustments, and I've got all my metering right up there to see. Then over to the, my right again, they showed you earlier, I have the control for the interface and patch base, so I can do any kind of routing that I want to do there either in the digital domain or I have 6U of patch base analog below that I can also route things with. So it gives me that control all in one place, really handy to have. Now sitting behind me, of course, I have another screen on the desk. That's actually a sit stand table that'll come up and down. And I use that for various shots when I'm creating videos and, and such. And on the wall behind me, again, is the large panel with all the various OBS feeds. Now, of course, I'm using the O-Ray display adapter here in a music production environment. But I'm also using it for video as I'm doing this demonstration. I deliberately left the DAW playing as well as having OBS running and recording everything just to demonstrate the capability of this, that it really doesn't overtax the system. Did a lot of checking with Latency Mon. I've been really testing this for quite some time to make sure it was rock solid, 100% stable before I went this route. And I have to say that I have no issues whatsoever. Now, of course, depending on what your computer is, you may have a different experience. I'm running an AMD 5900X, certainly not the most powerful or fast computer uh, by today's standards, but it's uh, more than enough to do what I need it to do. DPC latency, no issues again whatsoever with this. Hasn't added any extra strain that's causing dropouts, anything like there. But if you want to use this for video production, again, I had OBS running with the multi-display on one of the O-Ray screens. So, I mean, that's sending a lot of different video feeds to that all at once, taxing on the system, but not an issue. So overall, I'm going to say this is very stable. This is a great way to add extra screens, especially if you don't have connections on your graphics card or using a laptop where display options may be a little more limited. 
Now I will have a link below for more information, but this is a USB 3.1 Gen 1 device with an integrated USB-A cable and a tethered USB-C adapter. Now it's Windows, Mac OS, and Android compatible. I will also include a link below for the Silicon Motion website with all the available drivers, although I will tell you that it automatically downloaded the correct driver for me in Windows 10. And of course, for me, the biggest upgrade has been to my workflow. And when I have this digital analog hybrid patch bay, I've got all my gear plugged in, which is really convenient, but it's nice being able to route things on the fly and see exactly what's going on. And of course, I don't have to drag any windows over top of the DOS space that's behind me. As a matter of fact, if I want to go ahead and drag plugins from the DAW and just park them over on the screen, keep them open, that can be handy too, instead of opening and closing all the time. So a lot of advantages to that extra screen real estate here. Now you may find other uses for this in your studio, whether it's music, whether video production, or are you doing presentations? There's a lot of times when extra monitors are handy. Now, if you're looking for other ideas on how to upgrade your audio and video in your studio, check out one of the videos on the screen. As always, I really appreciate you joining me and I'll see you next time.